In today's video, I have a viewer requested review of the Talent Cell 170 amp hour battery. Now I was asked to review the smart battery. Talent Cell had sent me their normal battery without the Bluetooth capability. But this is okay because we will still be able to see if it pulls full capacity as well as the build quality on the internals. And straight away we can see we have a pretty generic case. We have the nylon strap. We have our terminals, positive and negative. We have a little bit of a short bolt here. This has a washer, a split washer, a hex head, and a Phillips screwdriver to tighten. This is a M8 bolt. And on the front of the battery, you can see here, we have our positive and our negative. We have 3,000 charge cycles with 100% depth of discharge, 5,000 with 80% depth of discharge, and 8,000 with 50% depth of discharge. We have our nominal voltage of 12.8 volts, nominal capacity of 170 amp hours at a 0.2 C discharge rate. And we also have our energy of 2,176 watt hours. Our charging voltage is 14 volts to 14.6 volts. Our maximum charging current is gonna be 100 amps. Our maximum discharge current is gonna be 200 amps. Charging temperature, zero to 45 degrees, Discharge temperature minus 20 to 60 degrees. Storage temperature zero degrees to 45 degrees. And our water rating of an IP55 rating, our battery dimensions, and our weight of 15.8 kilograms. And on the front, you can see we have 3000 lithium iron phosphate, 12.8 volts, 170 amp hours, and some warnings and their logo. Okay, now before I begin my test, I wanna do an over voltage protection test. I have the two leads into the back of the inverter, which is connected to the battery, and we will crank up the charging. Right now I'm charging 15 volts, 10 amps. We'll give this a few seconds and see if it disconnects. And there we go, we have over voltage protection. So now it's time to start the discharge test. This is the same setup I use on all my batteries. I have the torch tester with the torch shunt, and I have my voltage positive and negative sample cables running directly to the lugs connected to the battery, and the negative runs through the shunt, gives me a reading on this screen, which also gives me a reading on this screen via Bluetooth. Now this setup here only works in one direction. If you want to use this as a setup for monitoring in your RV or trailer, I wouldn't suggest it because you will not get a charging and a discharging sample. Okay, so on the screen here, we have our voltage, our current, our watts, our amp hour capacity, our kilowatt capacity, as well as three graphs showing the voltage, current, and wattage. So I'm now ready to start my test. I want to try and discharge around 435.2 watts in order to do a proper 0.2 C discharge rate. So now we are discharging at 443 watts, which is as close as I can get it to a 0.2 C discharge rate. I will let this test run. It should take about just under five hours and we will be back with the results. And the test is complete and we have a capacity of 177.52 amp hours, which is 7.52 amp hours above the rated capacity of this battery. So this test is a pass. Okay, we've passed capacity on this battery. So now it's time to tear it down and see what the internals look like. So for this, I'm gonna be using a putty knife and a hammer to see if we can get this apart in the most non-intrusive way I can think of. Okay, I think I got enough of the case torn away that I can probably pop this open now. All right. Oh, wow. So right off the bat, I'm looking at what appears to be fuses. See if I can bring this in. So right here, it looks like we have fuses and they're labeled F1, F2, F3, F4, and F5. 
Now, I think this means FET1, FET2, FET3, FET4, and FET5. These are 120 amp fuses. Now, what it looks like is that this BMS is mounted to this PCB with these fuses on here. So, I'm going to take the battery positive negative off to get this case, this lid off. So, this is the negative wire. We have two 6 AMG 200 degree wire. So, this is rather interesting. We have fuses up here, we have our P negative and our B negative over here. We have our positive that goes down, a BMS on top here, and this BMS is a DLX8308H4SBB200N200Z09. And there's a lot of Chinese here, but what I can tell is it looks like charging of 200 amps and discharging of 200 amps but I would follow the case's parameters of charging of 100 amps. And then down in here, you can see we have a DLX8308V1.22. We have our balance leads here with this spiral wrap, which is connected into the BMS. Uh, we have a connector here, which looks like this could be a temperature sensor. And we have five leads coming out of the balance port, so I'm assuming that this is the temperature sensor. So I'm gonna get this out, I'm gonna pull the cells out, and we'll see what we have. And you can see the BMS here. We have all of our FETs all lined up inside here, up to a piece of aluminum, which is connected to the top of the heat sink. As a separator, we have this stick-on kind of uh, adhesive here that is acting as a separator, as well as on top of the pack, we have a resin board that is taped on. So I'm gonna cut this open and see if we can't see the cells inside and see what they're using. The pack is now out. Now let's see if we can't get in here. Okay, so my first red flag of this battery is that the pressure release valves are covered by this foam. So that's not really ideal to have these pressure release valves covered because if anything was to happen and these need to vent, this is gonna inhibit this from venting. But nonetheless, I've actually never seen cells like this. These are long this way and then short on the tall side. So it looks like this is our main positive and we have a laser welded buzz bar on here to series connect as well as here and as well as here. These appear to be affixed right to the buzz bars, which is good. We have a little metal tab here for our main negative. And I was right, this is our temperature sensor right here. And the cells are B8K1000467 and 0B5CBB0M53A61X. Okay, low temperature charging protection test. I have the BMS hooked back up. I have my negative over here on the P negative, and I have my positive on the positive terminal. This is the temperature sensor. I am now charging with five amps. I will put this cold pack onto the temperature sensor and see what happens. Okay, I'm gonna adjust the thermostat. And this does not seem to be stopping the charging and we do not appear to have low temperature charging protection. Okay, I've been holding this pack here now for several minutes. Charging does not seem to be stopping. I'm gonna put this pack back into the freezer and I'm gonna have a second temperature sensor so we can see what the temperature is next to the probe. Okay, I have the temperature sensor for this thermometer 
and the temperature sensor for the BMS taped together here. And we are currently charging. Okay, we're at 8.5 degrees and still dropping. Charging is still going on. 3.5 degrees. Okay, we are now below zero degrees on the sensor and still dropping. I'm gonna to continue to hold this and see how long it's gonna run for. Negative 0 0.6 degrees, negative 0 0.8 degrees, negative one degree, and we are still charging. So it seems like we topped out at negative 1.1 and the charging has still continued. And as you can see, I had these two temperature probes taped together. So the reading that I'm getting off of here is the same reading that should be going to the BMS. So there you have it, that is the Talent Cell battery. Now I did check on Amazon, uh, the battery is only listed on Amazon, it is not listed on their website yet. And on Amazon it does not say that it has low temperature disconnect. So it's not false advertising, because they haven't said if it has it or not. Uh, but through my testing I've discovered that it does not have low temperature disconnect. Uh, as well, something to mention is the case size is actually the identical case size of a 100 amp hour battery, but this one is 170 amp hours, so they packed all that into this case that they use on the 100 amp hour cells. So a couple things to say about it is I did not like that they had the vents covered for the vent relief, and I do not like that it does not have low temperature disconnect protection. Um, it may not be a deal breaker. The price is really good. It's right around $500 for this battery. I believe it's around $580 for the battery with the Bluetooth. Uh, I would have liked to have seen the battery with the Bluetooth uh, because I have a suspicion that that battery has low temperature disconnect, but their regular model that they sent me does not have low temperature protection. But this is the Talent Cell 170 amp hour battery. Uh, it's pretty good for its price. It's in the price point it should be but I would not recommend this battery just because of the covering of the vents, the cells being turned on their side, and not having low temperature protection. I'm in a colder climate in the winter time, so this is something that I personally would need. So there you have it, this is the Town Cell battery. Thank you for watching, bye.